How's it going everyone? My name is Dan, but you can call me Malone. And today we're going to be taking a look at one of the most pivotal pieces of investing literature ever written. Now that's a pretty big statement to be making right at the start of the video. And obviously the impact and value of any book is of course subjective to the reader. That being said, if you've done any sort of research around what book is the best book to read when it comes to the stock market and investing, I'd be very confident in saying that you've more than likely come across references being made to this book. The name of the book is The Intelligent Investor. And it was written by Benjamin Graham. Now this book is widely referred to as the Bible of value investing. Value investing as opposed to growth investing involves discovering and investing in companies that are trading at a price that is below their estimated intrinsic value. In layman's terms, value investing is all about picking stocks that when all things are considered are undervalued by the market. Now obviously easier said than done but it's just important to be aware that this book is all about that particular investing philosophy. But this book to me is so much more than a book on value investing. This is a book about character building, emotional awareness, perseverance and resilience. This book will open your eyes to the fact that successful and sustainable investing is so much more than just picking the right stocks, but instead is all about controlling your behavior as an investor. I've personally read this book two times now and as you can see from my copy, I've really gone through it with a fine tooth comb. So what I thought I'd do today is sort of share some of my favorite quotes from the book and discuss my thoughts on how these ideas might be relevant to the investing world in 2021. Bear in mind this book was originally published in 1949 and a revised copy was republished in 1973. But you will be shocked how the teachings of Graham have stood the tests of time. But before we begin, as always, if you could ask you to please leave a like on the video. By liking the video, you're playing your part in spreading the word about the importance of financial education. So thank you in advance for doing that. And if you are new around here, please do consider hitting that red subscribe button below and joining our community of financial enthusiasts. We make financial education videos on this channel aimed at making conversations like these more of a cultural norm. So without further ado, let's get started. So the way I'm going to structure this video is that I'll read the quote from the book and then I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on how I think the quote might be applicable in today's stock market. To invest successfully, what's needed is a sound intellectual framework for making decisions and the ability to keep emotions from corroding that framework. This quote is actually from the preface of the book, which was written by Warren Buffett, who was a student of Graham's. Buffett is saying that successful investing ultimately comes from making informed decisions that aren't influenced by emotion. Now, the obvious question here, which is the subjective part of the quote, is what's the definition of successful investing? And the answer to that question is gonna vary greatly depending on whether you're talking to the Wall Street Bet subreddit or whether you're talking to a hyper-conservative bond investor. If we consider what the alternative to investing is, I think it's easier to visualize what successful investing might look like. The alternative to investing, broadly speaking, is leaving your cash on deposit in a bank account. This, of course, yields very little interest income for the individual, but this is the price of security. Your cash is covered by very various deposit guarantee schemes, so you're taking on very little risk by choosing to place your cash on deposit in a bank account. But as you may or may not know, your cash is subject to the effects of inflation, which means that the purchasing power of your cash is going to fall over time, especially if you aren't earning some form of return. So successful investing to me, in its most basic and minimalistic form, involves making investment decisions that will, insofar as possible, A, protect the value of your initial investment, and B, seek to earn a return that outpaces the rate of inflation, as so to protect the purchasing power of your cash. Buffett is saying that in order to invest successfully, emotion must be disconnected from the investment decision. This is more relevant than ever especially in the context of the events of the last year, with FOMO investing being at all-time highs. We've seen massive cash inflows into investments like cryptocurrency, electric vehicle stocks, SPACs, and penny stocks, all of which are largely driven by market sentiment. When your investment decision is based purely on emotion and isn't following any sort of predetermined framework, no matter how minimalistic that framework might be, your chances of investment success, as we previously defined it, is reduced. The future value of every investment is a function of its present price. The higher the price you pay, the lower your return will be. The intelligent investor realizes that stocks become more risky, not less, as their prices rise, and less risky, not more, as their prices fall. So these two quotes both concern the valuation of stocks. An important concept that's reiterated multiple times throughout the book is the investor's ability to take a step back, 
and ask themselves the question, how much am I willing to pay for this stock? Now, I've talked a lot recently, both here on the YouTube channel and over on my Instagram and TikTok, that there's been little concern around valuation in a lot of different areas of the stock market as of late. We've seen manic price inflation over the course of the last year in quote unquote growth stocks, such as Workhorse, Neo, Palantir and Churchill Capital, as well as more speculative stock market plays such as GameStop, AMC and even further afield in asset classes such as cryptocurrency. To clarify, I'm not dissing growth stocks. I believe growth investing to be a very viable and important part of any investing strategy. However, what people fail to understand is that the higher the price you pay for a growth stock, the lower your returns will be. Why exactly? Well, because the profits that any one company can earn are finite. And once the expected growth rate, which is driving the share price, starts to exceed the actual growth rate realized by the company, well then the share price is going to start declining. This is why you often hear analysts say all the good news has been priced in. Because the market has accounted for such high expectations for the future that even if the company does grow at an impressive rate, if that rate of growth is below the market's expectations then the stock price is going to suffer. So when you've companies like Tesla who are trading at a price to earnings ratio of over 1000, it's not unreasonable to believe that all the growth has been priced in at the current share price. This is why Graham reminds us that as the share price of any company increases, so too does the risk associated with that share. The book then goes on to say that recent history has shown that the market is unkindest to rapidly growing companies that suddenly report a fall in earnings. Therefore, one of the biggest risks in owning growth stocks is not that their growth will stop, but merely that it will slow down. And in the long run, that is not merely a risk, but a virtual certainty. So the next quote I want to discuss is the following. Obvious prospects for physical growth in a business do not translate into obvious profits for investors. The experts do not have dependable ways of selecting and concentrating on the most promising companies in the most promising industries. The best case in point example of how this quote might be applicable to the stock market in 2021 would be ARK Invest. ARK Invest are an investment management company who invests solely in disruptive innovation. They are most known for their selection of exchange traded funds, which invest in a number of different companies specializing in the likes of autonomous technology and robotics, next generation internet, genomics, and fintech. These funds have become extremely popular, especially among retail investors. And the funds themselves are seeing fresh investments each week of around $1.2 billion. ARK Invest has over $50 billion in assets under management, and that exceeds some industry veterans. This is very impressive considering ARK was only founded in 2014. The success of ARK Invest reflects the current market's enthusiasm for growth stocks and companies who are currently in the process of developing technologies and innovations which have the the potential to change the world. However, Graham tells us that such obvious prospects for physical growth in the future does not always translate into obvious profit-making opportunities for investors. This could be for a wide number of reasons. For example, the electric vehicle industry obviously has massive upside growth potential in the future, but it's impossible to tell which of the companies operating in this space will be the most successful. Therefore, you could end up bag-holding a dud company that wasn't able to capitalize on the earnings potential of its industry. Another reason why investors might not see exponential returns from their investment in these companies is because they've already paid for all that future potential in their initial investment. Remember how we talked about all the good news being priced in? Well, if you pay an exorbitant price for a stock today, then your returns tomorrow will be limited. Now granted, the emergence and growing popularity of exchange traded funds like the ones that ARK Invest offer do offer investors some level of diversification, albeit the benefits of that diversification are limited given that ARK Invest invests solely in disruptive innovation. But it does lessen the likelihood that you'll be left bag holding a dud company and it does increase the likelihood that you will gain some exposure to the winners. But the extent to which your investment returns benefit from these winners will be dependent on factors such as the price you pay for the ETF in the first place, the percentage weighting of the winners in the ETF itself, and whether the ARK investment managers were able to successfully allocate shareholder funds to the winners, which as Graham reminds us, ultimately is impossible because the investment managers have no way of knowing what companies are gonna be the most successful in their industries in the future. You can control whether the stocks or funds you buy will outperform the market today, next week, this month, or this year. But you can control your brokerage costs, your ownership costs, your expectations, your risk, 
your tax bills and your own behavior. This quote I think will always be applicable because it takes account of all the different costs that are ultimately going to impact your investment returns over the course of your investing career. The first two points around brokerage costs and ownership costs are becoming easier and easier for retail investors to manage. Most online brokers such as Trading212 have low transaction costs as one of their main selling points of the platform. It's unlikely that we'll see a shift in the other direction ever again as technology only improves over time. I think it's more important that investors are aware of the fees charged by the likes of life assurance companies with pension products and by investment managers when it comes to mutual funds and ETFs. These are the ownership costs that Graham is referring to. Managing your overall expectations for investment returns is also critically important when it comes to any investing strategy. As a rule of thumb, your expectations for investment returns should be correlated with the extent to which you're willing to educate yourself around the financial markets. If you put a great deal of effort into researching your investments and continuously improving your overall financial literacy, well then you can reasonably have higher expectations for investment returns. An investor who should really be expecting low but adequate returns, but is instead expecting high returns is a recipe for disaster. Graham notes in the book that you can control your overall exposure to risk and your overall behavior as an investor. But I believe these are two sides of the same coin. By understanding your own personal tolerance for risk, and then making investment decisions that make sense in the context of that understanding, you're less likely to fall foul of erratic investor behavior, which would largely be guided by emotion and emotion alone. The final point Graham makes is around controlling your tax bill. And to me, what this means is that you have to have a solid understanding of how the tax system in your personal jurisdiction treats the likes of capital gains, dividend income, and interest income. I have a full video uploaded on the channel which talks about the tax implications of investment investing in stocks, so I highly recommend checking that out if you're interested. So those are just a couple of my favorite quotes from The Intelligent Investor. I would honestly recommend this book to absolutely everyone. It's a fantastic read and it will give you a very comprehensive understanding of the stock market and investing. These were just some of my favorite quotes. As I mentioned, I could go on for much longer, so I might make a part two if that's something people will be interested in. So I really do hope you enjoyed the video here today. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do let me know in the comment section below. Leave a like in the video subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.